Welcome in, welcome in. <clears throat> I was in, just in the middle of soldering this uh, playlist, and then it occurred to me I might as well record it and make a quick lesson on uh, how I do it. And uh, I'm sure some of you guys will get some pointers. So first things first, you're going to need to get these. These are alignment rails from Drop. They're technically what they ship their uh, switches in. So when you buy switches from Drop, uh, Holy Pandas or whatever, they come in a box and all the switches are loaded in here like this. <clears throat> the switches are loaded in a row in, uh, in their shipping container so that their pins don't get bent. So you're going to either want to buy some switches from Drop to get these or anyone around you that has bought them may still have them if they haven't thrown them out. I happened to have got these off Facebook Marketplace when someone was selling them. I said, I'll give you some money for the rails because most people think it's just garbage, which it kind of is. Uh, but these are great for soldering plateless and being used as switch rails for alignment. So you'll see like there's no movement at all. So you got to get your hands on these. Uh, I do have extras. I have been giving them out. Uh, recently, I gave, I gave one to Bob. I gave one to... Um, Dad tech, so help aid in, aid in with him. All right, so here's a couple of tricks. Here's another hack that I learned recently. Uh, I got this off Savior Stream. Take if you don't have one of those uh, fancy solder holders, get your pump. It's a perfect fit. It'll stop here on this button, and you just put it in your container. Now you have a spool. <laughs> Quality of life home hack. Okay, so show you what I'm doing here is, particularly with HMX, this is a Sunset Glebe, HMX has really thin pins. So when you're soldering plateless, I'll just do this quickly to show you. You'll see they are barely in the PCB and there's wiggle. See how they wiggle? Because they're, uh, even with five pin alignment, they're still uh, rotational movement. So if you're soldering this playlist and you don't have drop rails, you're going to end up with keys that potentially that are jank. Some rotated left, some rotated right, and you'll have crooked keys. And as well, because they're so thin, the switches just fall out. So the way this works is you do it row by row. One. Not really row by row, but enough to do like one rails worth, which is maybe seven or eight switches. You can see they're bouncing around here. Get your switch rail. I could actually put two more. Okay, so then you slide this over the uh, stems like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so we've got the switch rail taking care of the alignment so that they'll all be straight. Technically this can fall out, but because there's like nine of them with 18 pins holding on, then uh, it's a little bit better. You can uh, give this a push to try to make sure they're fully seated. But because it's spring loaded, it does tend to come up a bit, but we're gonna take care of that with the one pin method. So I solder all my switches, even if it's plated or on a stiff plate, I'll always just do one pin. So you see the ones above, these all have one pin only, the second pin has not been done. And the reason for this is you want to ensure that they are all vertically flush and touching the board. <clears throat> and generally speaking, with especially with softer plates, uh, you can have up and down movement. Everything will be aligned from a 90 degree standpoint, but up and down, there's going to be some variance, especially if the plate uh, exerts some pressure up and down. And if especially if you build corners in, you can introduce some bow into the plate, and then the center switches can potentially pop up a bit when you're soldering. So I tend to build, if you've ever watched one of my live streams, 
I tend to build my switches inside out like this, forcing all the pressure out so that the plate will flatten out this way. Now in this case, we're doing plateless, so it doesn't matter. It's just like if you put a piece of tape down on a box or a sticker, you wouldn't just go like this and, and then smooth your hands from two sides because you end up with a big bubble in the middle. You would put it in the middle and then push all the air out to the sides. In this case, it doesn't matter. I'm just rambling a bit. So you've got your switch rail on. <clears throat> We've got our solder ready to go. We've got our fan. Okay, so let me zoom in here. I don't know if you guys can watch the solder, maybe. This is about as close as it gets. Um, I may be able to zoom this a bit on the scene. No, okay, it doesn't matter. I'm sure you all know how to solder. This is more just to, the effectiveness of the switch rail for alignment. All right, so here's the one pin method. I usually use the left pin. Hopefully you guys can see. Heat up the pin, drop the solder on, fill it up. And then boom, let me turn my fan on. You guys might right hear some noise. Heat up the pin, one pin only. Boom. Boom. Now again, we're gonna go back over this. Boom. 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 All right, so here's what we got. You can see we've just got uh, this pin only has been soldered. One, two, three, four. Now it's all one pin. You can see from a vertical standpoint, they do appear to be kind of flush, but to ensure this, we're gonna reflow the pins. So you take the drop rail off, you just slide it off. You see we've got the alignment taken care of. Now we're gonna take the flushness is the next step. Put your finger on the switch and give it some pressure towards this side. And then we're gonna heat this pin to reflow and your finger will push it down. Now if any of these are not flush, you will hear it. So let me turn off my fan. And we are gonna reheat this pin with some pressure on the switch. Let's see if you guys can hear anything. Nope, that one is fully seated. That one is fully seated. That one is fully seated. Fully seated. Fully seated. Fully seated. Fully seated. Fully seated. That one moved a little bit. I could feel it in my hand, but it wasn't enough to hear a click. Okay, so these are now completely flush this the roll we just did should be completely flush and perfectly straight because of the uh rail so that's how it's not very hard as long as you've got the rail now you would go back in and fill the other pins across the board now this particular pcb is super flexy it's for a therapy one so it probably would have been even more annoying to solder playlist without the uh, this tool but that's basically it so I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of this. One, uh, fill it, put the drop rail on. Now, another thing I can mention is, since we have this one that's already got one pin soldered, when you put the rest of the row in, <clears throat> this is, Split backspace, so that's gonna be like this. And like this. And as well as this far right one here for the 75%, uh, I guess that one would probably be a page up or something. So even though there's a spread across like this, you can still get the rail on no problem with the gap in between. Now the reason I'm showing you this extra step is the far left one is already anchored and soldered. So that's actually gonna anchor your whole rail. And since I've got some space here, you can just keep on going right over the solder, the ones that you've already soldered. All right, same idea. We just one pin everything. 
I'm just kind of helping them along to start and then you would one pin them all pull the rail off and then uh, do the second pin and you're done all right I hope that's helpful to see how you uh, solder plate this you can see it's not very hard as long as you have a drop rail if you don't have a drop rail uh, you could do a Google search there are three 3d printed versions of this that can assist you as well but I prefer the drop rail because it's uh, made of metal and uh, that's it let me finish the rest of the board. Have a good one.